Hello, ladies and gentlemen. The Japan Science and Technology Agency and the Malaysia alumni of Sakura Science Association, MASA, are delighted to welcome you to the second Malaysia alumni of Sakura Science Association alumni meeting with the theme of bridging social capital and cultivating excellence. With this program, we hope to encourage the Sakura Science Program alumni, mainly from Malaysian members, to expand their experiences in studying, doing research, or getting a job in Japan and other countries. Additionally, we would like to remind MASA alumni about Japan, which also include the Sakura Science Program. My name is Ruwaida Jami'an, and it is my honor to be moderator today. Before starting the webinar, I would like to explain the agenda today. We are pleased to have speeches from honorable guests and keynote sessions from guest speakers. Later, we will have a short photo session and then sharing experience session of MASA members. Finally, there will be a sharing session by Jasso and Jagam regarding the study and work opportunity in Japan. You will see a quick questionnaire at the end of the webinar. So please fill it out if possible. Your opinions are significant to us. We will send a webinar attendance certificate to you via email. Each session with invited speakers will have a short time for Q&A. And please feel free to type your question in the Q&A box. We ask your understanding that we can only answer some of the questions due to the time limit of the webinar. Without further ado, let us hear from Mr. Muhammad Hazik Sharum, the representative from MASA, to deliver his opening speech. Mr. Hazik, the screen is yours. Hi, thank you so much, Dr. Norwaida, for the moderator uh, for today. Uh, good, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to say thank you for your time joining uh, this uh, meeting. And we would like to welcome all of you to our second Malaysia alumni of Sakura Science Association MASA alumni meeting. For the past two years, we have been struck by the pandemic of COVID-19 and it was a very challenging time for all of us. There are a lot of things that were heavily impacted due to this virus, including the economy, health, lifestyle, and the new norm as well. And for the new norm, which has been introduced by the World Health Organization, WHO, where we need to wear masks when we go out, practice a social distance in a crowd, place and washing our hand frequently. Therefore, for this year's meeting, it's saddened me because we are unable to make a physical sem seminar with all of you. And um, due to safety and since the cases are rising from time to time, so therefore we are changing from a physical seminar into a webinar as for today. However, in MASA, we always try our best to promote, educate, and give the full overview on how to study, work, and also sending students such as postgraduate and graduate students from Malaysia to Japan. For your information, last year, we have conducted a webinar with the collaboration of University Putra Malaysia, UPM, where we discuss on the challenges, coping strategy, and the support given during the pandemic for Malaysian postgraduate and academician in Japan. And on behalf of MASA, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to Japan Science and Technology JST for the support and assist throughout this time to our, to our team. And it is proven that various exchange programs that were introduced such as the Sakura Science Program has greatly opened our mind it is not only increase our scientific knowledge, but it also helps to expand our horizon on the beauty of cross-cultural exchange. Japan is undeniably one of the most interested countries that we have ever visited. 
from the high-end technology to a smaller significant things like how disciplined and well-organized the social system in Japan. On top of this, we hope that the Japan government will always continue to inspire, support, and in accumulate good social practice for us to learn through interesting programs for Malaysia team. Lastly, let's hope and pray that this COVID-19 pandemic will come to an end and we may live normally and create more programs to all of you and meet each other physically for the upcoming program. With that being said, I would like to close my presentation with a warm welcome to all of you for your time today. Thank you so much and have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Hazik, for, for the opening uh, speech. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Durul Kishi, the Director General of Sephora Science Program Headquarters, to deliver his opening remarks. Dr. Kishi, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. I'm Kishi Teruo. I'm in charge of the entire Sakura Science program at JST since April of last year. First of all, I'd like to give my sincere thanks to all participants today. I'm very pleased that we are able to hold this webinar online despite COVID-19. As many of you know, the Sakura Science Program started from 2014 and has invited approximately 33,000 young talented people to Japan. The first alumni meeting of Malaysia Alumni of Sakura Science Association, which we call MAFSA in short, took place in October 2019. And now the group includes about 1,855 young talented people from Malaysia. I'm very honored that a MAFSA alumni meeting is again taking place for the first time in about two and a half years. Today, I believe it is a precious opportunity to hear about study, about and work in Japan. Moreover, you will be able to hear about some great experiences from the two speakers of the Sakura Science Group in Malaysia. I hope this webinar inspires you and opens up a new ex exciting path for your own future career. The Sakura Science Program now welcomes you, young, welcomes young people from all over the world. And I believe it has entered a new era. We will do our best to support the Sakura Science Group members even more. Please enjoy the webinar. Thank you for, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Kishi. Next, I will move to the next session, a speech from honorable guests. First of all, I would like to invite His Excellency Katsuhiko Takahashi, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Japan to Malaysia. His Excellency Katsuhiko Takahashi, the screen is yours. Mr. Muhammad Hazik Shahrum Lavin Dalam, Malaysia Alumni of Sakura Science Association. Mr. Nuraza Muhammad Idrus, Charged Affair at Interim of the Embassy of Malaysia in Tokyo. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. 
I would like to express my gratitude to Malaysia alumni of Sakura Science Association and the Japan Science and Technology Agency for giving me this opportunity to say a few words on this special occasion of the second Malaysia alumni of Sakura Science Association alumni meeting. I am truly grateful to all of you for joining this memorable event today. I always enjoy attending any gathering of young people, and especially those who have been to Japan to study like you all. You are among the precious assets for the future relationship between Japan and Malaysia. Let me introduce the bilateral relations between Japan and Malaysia. The relations have been strong and dynamic since the diplomatic relations were established in 1957. Since then, Japan and Malaysia have enjoyed the long-running and strong bond of friendship. What is unique about the relations between the two countries is that the mutual trust have been cultivated through educational exchanges and close business interactions under the Lukwista policy, which was launched by the government of Malaysia in 1982. This year, we celebrate the 65th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations and the 40th anniversary of the Luk East policy. Under the LEP and other means, many Malaysian youth have been making remarkable contributions to the advancement of Malaysia at the forefront of the society after their studies in Japan. Some have joined the government services to shoulder huge responsibility in leading the nation, while others have pursued careers in the academic or educational institutions, uplifting research and nurturing the next generation of promising young Mauritians like Dr. Moimen Lin and Dr. Zamri Yusuf, who will be delivering their keynote speeches today. In addition, some have developed renowned businesses and contributed to the economic growth of Malaysia. As you can see, human resource development through people-to-people -people exchanges is the cornerstone of the cordial relations between Japan and Malaysia. A number of initiatives are ongoing for further promoting the exchanges and the Sakura Science Exchange Program is one of the most important programs. Sakura Science Exchange Program started in 2014, and so far, over 1,855 promising young Malaysians have been invited. In addition, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, JST held 11 online university visits and approximately 13,000 Malaysian students have joined, which made up 40% of the total participants from around the world. I must say, this is the telling evidence of the high interest in study in Japan among Malaysian youth and the big potential for massage activities in the future. Malaysia has a large number of talented and aspiring young students and researchers like you. Japan is proud of its advanced science, technology, and engineering, and there are a number of excellent and globally well-known universities and other educational institutions in Japan. If you look at the number of Nobel Prize winners in natural science in the 21st century so far, 19 of them are Japanese, which is the world's second only after the United States. I strongly believe that Japan and Malaysia have a lot to share with great potential for mutual benefits in the field of science, technology, and innovation. By joining hands, we can together explore a brighter future for our two countries and for the rest of the world. I am sure all of you do have a big dream in your heart. Then, why don't you move a step forward 
towards study and research in Japan. Life in Japan will become a unique and a valuable asset for your future career progression and help your big dream come true. Before concluding, I would like to once again thank Massa and JST for organizing this event. Today, you will be exposed to all sorts of information on study and research in Japan. I hope all participants will enjoy the rest of the program for your future endeavor and success. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Terimakashi. Thank you, His Excellency Katsuhiko Takahashi, for your inspiring speech. Next, I would like to welcome Mr. Noazam, charge the affairs of the Embassy of Malaysia in Tokyo. The screen is yours, Mr. Azam. Dr. Teruo Kishi, Director General, Sakura Science Program. Japan Science and Technology Agency, JST, His Excellency Mr. Takahashi Katsuhiko, Ambassador of Japan to Malaysia, Mr. Keiji Furuya, Member of the House of Representative Japan, President of Japan-Malaysia Parliamentary Friendship Association, guest speakers, representatives from JST, Masa, Jasso, and Jagam, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, allow me to thank the Japan Science and Technology Agency, JST, and MASA for the invitation to the second alumni meeting with the theme, Bridging Social Capital and Cultivating Excellence. I believe that as a bridge between Malaysia and Japan under the ambit of education and academia, the Sakura Science Association has further facilitated the strengthening of bilateral relations since its establishment. While bilateral relations between two countries is often symbolized by the exchange of high-level visits, total trade and investment, and the likes, the significance of people-to-people -people exchanges must also be underscored through the efforts and activities of organizations like JST and MASA, as well as JAGAM and JASO. I cannot stress enough how important the participants and members are. As representatives of our countries, when we engage with one another all these years, especially as we commemorate the 65th anniversary of Malaysia and Japan's diplomatic relations and the 40th anniversary of the Look East policy, LEP, this year. I'm sure many of you are the fruits of the LEP, now paying it forward through your achievements and contributions to the society. Ladies and gentlemen, the pandemic, despite its setbacks, has given prominence to the strength of social capital during the past challenging two years. I believe the theme set by the organizers, coupled with the depth we have established after more than six decades of cooperation between Malaysia and Japan, is indeed a timely one, especially through the lineup of sessions that have been arranged for today's meeting. I'm confident that this meeting will be successful in achieving its intended objectives and hope that all participants would find these sessions thought-provoking and informative. At this end, I would like to once again convey my sincere appreciations to JSD and MASA for today and look forward to future engagements and visits between Malaysia and Japan for the year. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you, Mr. Noor Azam, for your inspiring speech. Next, I, I would like to welcome Mr. Keiji Furuya, Member of the House of Representative Japan, Chief Secretary, Japan-Malaysia Parliamentary Friendship Association. 
Mr. KG Furia, the floor is yours. Distinguished guests, all eminent speakers, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am KG Furuya, a member of parliament in the House of Representatives of Japan. I also serve as the president of the Japan Malaysia Parliamentary Friendship Association. Today, I would like to congratulate on the holding of the second general meeting of the Malaysia Alumni of Sakura Science Association, MASA. As we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic is still very evident in Malaysia and Japan. I wish all the infected patients speedy recovery and hope the situation will return to normal. Soon, not only in Malaysia and Japan, but throughout the world. Malaysian government started the look with policy in 1982 and this year marked the 40th anniversary. Under this policy, the number of international students and trainees from Malaysia who have studied in Japanese universities, technical colleges and others exceeds about 26,000. As people to people exchange uh, centered on young people are the basis of basis for building a strong relationship. I will continue to put in more effort to welcome more international students to Japan. As part of this, we will uh, thoroughly implement measures against the COVID-19 and strive to resume the acceptance of international students who are currently uh, suspended except for a small part. I was informed that the Sakura Science program, which started uh, 2014, had already invited uh, 1,855 talented young people from Malaysia to visit Japan. They had the opportunity to experience the advances of Japanese science and technology as well as our culture. Through these activities, I'm sure that they have cultivated mutual understanding and goodwill between the people of our two countries. Furthermore, I believe that they will contribute to the development of our society, including science and technology, in both Malaysia and Japan. I also convinced that the time they sp spent in Japan has been an irreplaceable and wonderful ex experience for their future life. For those who participated today, the lectures by Malaysian who formerly studied in Japan and the experiences shared by the alumni of the Sakura Science program will provide a good opportunity to think about your future career path. After hearing their presentations, I hope you can be inspired to consider your further study or research in Japan. I sincerely hope that all of today's participants will play a leading role as a bridge between Malaysia and Japan in your own field. Last but not least, Japan and Malaysia share many common values and mutual interests. Based on the uh, common values and mutual interests, I believe that the relationship between Japan and Malaysia will continue to deepen not only among individual citizens, but also between governments. I would like to conclude my message. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. K.G. Furuya, for your inspiring speech. Now, let us start our next program, the keynote session. After the presentation, we will have the Q&A session. So please write down your question 
using the Q&A feature of the Zoom. Let me introduce our first keynote speaker, Dr. Moi Meng Ling, Graduate School of Medicine, the University of Tokyo. Dr. Moy is a virologist that has been working on prevention measures against tropical and emerging virus diseases. She has been working on research fields from viral pathogenesis and transmission, diagnostics and vaccine development, surveillance of vir viral emergence and population immunity to tracking virus spread, epidemiology and field research. Her projects have led to the successful development of in vitro and in vivo models for flavivirus and COVID-19 vaccine evaluation studies. The novel models have also led to a better understanding of the immune responses induced after dengue and Zika virus infection. She is currently the deputy head of WHOCC for reference and research of tropical and emerging virus diseases, JPN67, and is working closely with WHO, GLAD-HP, and GOARN, local and international community to reduce the international spread of high threat pathogens disease and to improve rapid diagnostics to these outbreaks including Zika and SARS-CoV-2. With this, I invite Dr. Moy to deliver his keynote and title, The Essence of Kakehashi in Driving Progress and Development, Lesson Learned from My Journey as Yu Gakuse to a Todai Professor. Dr. Moy, the screen is yours. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ruwaida, for the excellent uh, introduction. And a very good afternoon to the organizers, GSD and MASA, Dr. Terio Kishi, um, His Excellency, Mr. Kasuhiko Takahashi, the Ambassador of Japan to Malaysia, Mr. No Azam, as well as uh, Mr. Keiji Furuya, guests and um, participants. So today I will be talking on um, some of the works that uh, we have done uh, in Japan and also in collaboration with um, many countries in Southeast Asia, including Malaysia. And I will give a few examples of what we are currently doing in collaborations with these countries. So just to give a brief introduction of um, what I've experienced so far. So I was um, previously a graduated from, I graduated from UPM, um, University of Britannia, Malaysia. And after that, I um, received the Max scholarship I'm from the Japanese government and I continued my studies in Scuba University and later on as a researcher at the uh, National Institute of Infectious Diseases in Japan and I went on working as a uh, uh, Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare uh, technical uh, researcher and later on I went on working at the Institute of Tropical Medicine in Nagasaki University as an associate professor and later on the professor, and then I moved on to uh, the University of Tokyo recently as a professor in um, health sciences. So I, my uh, recently, a, this uh, research has also bear fruit and um, I was able, I was very honored to receive an award uh, from the AMET uh, Japan Agency for Medical Research and Development at the Prime Minister's office and um, together with our colleagues. So I'm extremely grateful for the experience um, throughout my journey, starting as a Ryugakse from 2003, right up to um, a researcher in um, today. So one of the projects which we are covering on, we are doing national and international projects for dengue, emerging diseases, emerging diseases. And we also, um, to exchanges between students and some of them were Mac scholars. And um, for that, we hope to contribute to disease control in the Southeast Asia as well as the region, and also to continuously give back in many other ways, for example, learning, teaching as well to the back to the society. So um, what is important as in considering for Kakehashi is considered as a bridge 
So in a bridge, in the essence, um, you need networks, you need collaborations, you need to give back um, at both ways. So what we've been doing um, right now, what we've been doing all this while, especially for infectious diseases, because um, these diseases have no border, as we can see by COVID-19, we know that these diseases can spread very quickly. And it's very important for us to work between regions. And it's very important for us to strengthen the network as well as collaborations. So what we've been working previously as I was um, uh, together with the uh, WHO Collaboration Center, it was a reference center for tropical virus and emerging virus diseases. So we've done um, technical trainings. We have went to um, Vietnam, we went to Myanmar, and we went to several countries in Southeast Asia, um, introducing technologies which are of importance, for example, for diagnostics, for vaccine development, and all these uh, technologies were partially developed in Japan, and we find out what is the essence, what is important uh, for them to be able to use this technology and develop their own uh, strategies for fighting infectious disease in their own country. So what we've been doing recently, especially for COVID and um, dengue, flavi viruses. So my specialty is uh, flavi viruses on dengue and Zika. So this is a huge problem in Southeast Asia and Malaysia. So what we've also been working on COVID, um, most of the infectious disease person, people have been working on COVID um, some more or less. So what we've been doing um, along with WHO, along with uh, many people, many collaborators in Japan and international collaborators, and in the early, uh, during the early uh, epidemic, early phase of the epidemic, we ran show what sort of disease it was, what sort of characteristics they have, and what we did was to um, look for suitable uh, diagnostics for the disease and look for suitable strategies to be able to fight off the disease at that particular region. So every single country has a different situation for each of the, for, um, for COVID-19 or for dengue. So for us, we have to figure out what is specifics for this particular area, what's the specifics um, for this uh, characteristics of these diagnostics and whether they can be used for these certain periods. So for all these, we've done epidemiological studies, we've done development of rapid diagnostics for SARS-CoV-2, we've also done some support work for vaccine development, therapeutics development, and between the international collaboration, we've been also working with HUKM um, to, uh, for developing uh, reagents um, during then for the diagnostics of COVID-19. So for the technology-wise, we've been developing much more rapid technology to develop, um, to check on the levels of neutralizing antibodies against SARS-CoV-2. So this is one of the um, important uh, ways to measure whether you are protected, protected against the disease. So we've been also doing some work on that as well. And we've also been monitoring what sort of um, virus is causing um, COVID-19 in a um, particular region. So um, we always heard of VOCs such as Delta and Omicron. So it has to be continuous monitoring and when and where and how many patients has been occurring in this particular region and how is it happening. So we've been also looking at that uh, for this particular two years. So um, the, the essence of um, collaboration between uh, regions in Vietnam, in Malaysia, and Southeast Asia on COVID-19. So these um, bridges or these kakehashi has been built for quite a long time. So even before my arrival in Japan, so there has been ongoing collaborations between countries of each of these regions. So the difference now is that with the ongoing outbreaks, with the ongoing ep epidemic, we have to use all these bridges to cross over and see what sort of disease is causing problem in the region and what can we do for that. So to do that on our end, we also have to develop suitable tools to deal with all the infectious diseases. For example, what we've been doing in Vietnam is to conduct epidemiological studies to find out what sort of virus, the characteristics of the virus, which is causing all these disease in the tropical and emerging, um, in, in the other tropical and tropical region. So our research has also involved um, Japanese encephalitis as well as Zika outbreak. And then in the uh, early 2020s, 
we received a, um, a request from the Vietnamese government, um, Ministry of Health, to uh, send out uh, suitable uh, diagnostics and to help support their system for developing diagnostics um, during that. And there uh, we helped out on the um, PCR regions from the very beginning. But at the end, I, I think uh, many of the regions have settled down to what sort of regions or what sort of uh, methods they want to use for diagnostics. But during then, it's particularly important um, when you see an emergence of a new disease, that's when you have to rapidly strike out and rapidly think of a suitable strategy to deal with all these infectious diseases. So what all we went on to before that, uh, like I said, the bridge has been built many years back. The collaboration between Japan and Southeast Asia has been going for many years, but a bridge um, without anyone which is looking after it, without anyone which is using it, it's just a bridge. So um, to be able to fulfill that, um, someone will have to always, uh, I mean, maintain the bridge, has to look after the bridge, has to use it in an appropriate way so that it'll be useful for either way. So in this sense, um, when there's a large uh, Zika epidemic outbreak in Japan, we quickly utilized that bridge, that collaboration bridge between um, Japan and Vietnam. And we went in there and we look, okay, so this Zika is actually causing microencephaly in this um, region in Vietnam. So we were able to find out that very quickly and we were able to report that to the Ministry of Health and we tell them, okay, you see, there's a case of um, microencephaly in the region. And this is how uh, we found, this is how we found out and how many members were involved. So we found that there's a small percentage of uh, members of families were involved. There's a small percentage of epidemic which has happened there. So all these is very important when you want to do, uh, when you want to, uh, in, uh, when you want to have all these uh, control strategies, especially for infectious disease, it's important to act fast and at the suitable time point. So this is generally what um, we have um, done so far. For example, what we have to do is a uh, technology uh, review, consultation, as well as some um, training uh, support, and um, in the end, ultimately, of improvement of all infrastructure. So we have to think of ways, effectiveness, capacity, sustainability, and all this, you can, it can be done with a very good bridge, which is where Katehashi comes in. Okay, so scientific summary um, for infectious diseases is very important because especially for SARS, we see the emergence of lots of uh, variants of concerns, lots of strains that may um, cause much more adverse effects to their pandemic situation like that. So it's very important to use all this current uh, bridge or may perhaps build new bridges um, for the control of infectious diseases. As um, there are many types of bridges, but it's up to you. You can choose to have a strong one. You can choose to have a beautiful one, but choose one which lasts long and choose one which is useful so that you can inspire much more to use your bridge or maybe to cross over to the bridge or maybe to build much more bridges from that particular one um, which you have chosen. All right, so the bridges, Katehashi here can be so symbolic. It can be culture bridges. It can be past and present bridges. To, um, for the past and present, for example, technology or social society values, it can be symbolic bridges between time and space. So many types of bridges, but um, it will always begin with someone which wants to cross over and which want to interact and to bring, um, to, to bring the gaps or break down the walls between groups. All right, so the last uh, slide will be my take home message. And um, as Malaysians coming to foreign land, uh, we'll be, um, we'll, we can carry on Malaysian values. We can act as mini ambassadors in Malaysia. And what we can act is a halfway bridge to, um, for how others see us, as well as open new doors and opportunities. So each of the bridge um, will be depend on unique circumstances. It's up to us to negotiate through that and build one which will last long. So, I'll end up with a bridge uh, uh, called Nibane um, Bashi. It's located in Nagasaki. It's built up a few hundred years ago. So it's a strong and beautiful bridge. And it will up, really be up to you to decide what sort of bridge. And um, I hope that it will be a strong one and it should inspire 
many more bridges uh, with the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moi Mengli, for your ama amazing presentation. Uh, a friendly reminder to everyone, we will be having a photo session after in 10 minutes time. Please be ready in front of the camera after the Q&A session. Next, I will move to um, five minutes Q&A session, but we are running a bit out of time. So I'm going to read one question from the attendee. As the new SARS-CoV-2 virus variant emerge, will the existing COVID-19 lose their efficacy or how the existing vaccine combat new variant? Dr. Moy? Oh, I think uh, the question is more on how the current vaccine, the existing vaccine, will be effective against the newer strains. So we all we will always have to monitor what sort of um, strains is coming out. So at the present moment, there's no not much strong indication that um, the current vaccine is not working. But um, we have to perform much more um, studies. For example, we have to do much more studies on all these newer strains as to whether the um, existing vaccine will work against them. But WHO is always working on newer generation vaccines. So I think um, it, I think it's just a matter of time where they, they will probably be much more newer generations of vaccine, which will be much more um, useful against um, all these newer strains as well. Thank you, Dr. Moy. We have few uh, questions, uh, but due to the limit, time limitation, uh, we are going to finish the Q&A session for Dr. Moy. Thank you, Dr. Moy, for answering okay, the question. You. Probably you can write down your, the answer in the chat box, okay? Next, let me introduce our second keynote speaker, Dr. Zamri Yusuf, Senior Lecturer from University Technology Malaysia. Uh, Dr. Zamri bin Muhammad Yusuf received a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, applied physics from the School of Mechanical Engineering Nagoya Institute of Technology, NITEC, Aichi, Japan in 2008. He completed his master's degree from the Department of Frontier Materials in 2010. He was awarded the President Award of the Department of Frontier Materials in 2011 by the President of NITEC, Prof. Minoru Takahashi. He continued his research works and obtained a Doctor of Engineering degree from the Department of Frontier Materials in 2013. He finished two years of postdoctoral in NITEC Japan between 2013 to 2015. He was elected president of Nagoya Institute of Technology Malaysian Students Alumni Association between 2017 until 2019. At present, he has more than 90 ISI index scientific publication. He received a few Japanese-based research grants, such as Sakura Science Exchange Program, AUNSIT Net Collaboration Education Program Grant, and AUNSIT Net ASEAN Universities Mobility Grant. He is currently the research fellow at Advanced Membrane Technology Research Center, MTech, University Technology Malaysia, and the senior lecturer at the School of Mechanical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University Technology Malaysia. Please welcome Dr. Zamri with his keynote and title, Life as a Student and Researcher in Japan. Dr. Zamri, the screen is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, Dr. Norwaida. Okay, today this is uh, my uh, share. I would, I would like to share about my uh, experience uh, as a student and researcher in Japan. Okay, uh, my name is Mama Zambri from uh, UTM. Uh, I'm. I start. Uh, I I receive uh, the a scholarship uh, to study to Japan uh, from the uh, from the uh, Louis policy. So I study at the Ambassador uh, in Japan uh, in year 2002 until 2004. So I'm the best number 21. And then uh, I've entered uh, 
joining uh, Nagoya Institute of Technology. Uh, for your information, Nagoya Institute of Technology uh, based at uh, Aichi area, which is uh, one of the biggest manufacturing industry area in Japan. So there's a lot of uh, industries, uh, for example, uh, automotive and aerospace industries in Aichi area. In this university, uh, previously, uh, they, they offer co uh, mechanical course with the credits around 24 to 26. So you can take uh, around this uh, credit for every semester and all courses in Japanese, except uh, English and culture course, because in Nagoya City of Technology, some of the uh, professor who teaching the culture course, they can speak in Malay language because they have stayed in, in Indonesia and Malaysia for a very long time. The course in, in Nagoya City of Technology actually uh, mixed with the practical training, programming course, uh, laboratory and museum visit, uh, and also uh, in third year and fourth year, actually, they, they offer, uh, they, they, they do the seminar, uh, the professional talks uh, from the Toyota company engineers. So they, they discuss on a very specific uh, discuss, uh, uh, product, for example, brake, uh, transmission, gear, uh, uh, in, about the automotive. Uh, in the end of the fun, uh, in the end of the, our degree, actually, we need to do the final project. So there will be a one year uh, final project program. Lah. Okay, so this is my picture uh, of my friend visiting the Toyota Museum. And for your information, Toyota actually uh, start from the fabric uh, company and then it shift to the uh, automotive company. So this is my uh, the picture from my hostel to the uh, university. Actually, the, the hostel is very near to the university. So you just need to walk around five minutes lah, to go to the class. So uh, I've been in the uh, under the Prof Tane Morosaki Laboratory start from 2007 during my uh, final year project. Okay, uh, he actually was my mentor uh, during my second year. So he uh, mentioned that he discovered a new type of material called as carbon uh, fiber. He also owned a patent with uh, Olympus uh, fabricating a carbon nanofiber on the uh, atomic uh, force microscope uh, and uh, this is a very uh, interesting product so this is a picture of uh, our uh, lab mats uh, in 2013 so if you can see that uh, our lab mats is consists of the 50 percent uh, international student and also 50 percent japanese student so in in the labs actually we we, uh, we communicate using english so for my research, it's actually a bit uh, complicated. Okay, I need to use a very uh, uh, say, uh, complicated instrument we call as transmission electron microscope to observe nanomaterial. So my, my task is to study the, 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 the properties of the uh, carbon nanomaterial such as graphene by apply with the uh, applied voltage or uh, uh, apply with uh, temperature and study its behavior. So uh, the 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 lab activity is very, very busy, but very interesting because uh, we enjoy doing our lab. And uh, for example, uh, here is, you can see my, one of my, my junior, Dr. Yazid, he's uh, doing uh, his uh, research. Uh, he's currently at the Nagoya Institute of Technology doing his postdoc. So this is one of my first conference I've joined uh, with Prof. Tanimura, International Vacuum Gunana Training Conference uh, in 2009 at Hamamatsu. Uh, start from this conference, I joined a lot of conference uh, with Prof. Tanimura and uh, one of the achievement I uh, received uh, from the uh, Nagoya University of Technology is the President Award in 2011. As a student, there's a lot of activity you can uh, join or you can gather with uh, your friends. For example, during the springtime, you can uh, do the Hanami. And uh, you also can join with other students uh, gathering because uh, actually in Nagoya, uh, they are so called as a educational city because there's a lot of university in Nagoya. So in Nagoya, even though we stay at Nagoya City of Technology, we also uh, have set a group with Nagoya University students because our university is very, very near. We also organize sports, for example, badminton, football. During the summertime, we're doing barbecue near the riverside. And then uh, at the same time also, we can uh, do the hiking at the Mount Fuji. And during the autumn, uh, we can go for the Budogari or uh, go to the uh, grape uh, farm. And during the winter, 
you can enjoy the, the snowboarding or skiing. Uh, normally, uh, every year we will do the uh, Sobek Sky or we call it as a farewell party for each student who will leave Japan. So it's very interesting to spend life, uh, to spend your life as a student in Japan. Uh, one of the examples of school activity, actually in, in Nagoya Institute of Technology, we actively joined the international student activity. For example, in, uh, during the night at Open Campus, we will uh, uh, promote uh, the Malaysian local food, for example, curry puff, uh, roti jala, and sell to the local uh, people in uh, nearby to the Surumai Park. So this is uh, one of the experience. So almost every year we join this event. Another event is that uh, some, sometimes uh, the, the, the uh, primary school uh, teacher will, will invite us uh, to teach uh, history to their students. Uh. This is my, some, some of the, uh, our experience, uh, teaching, uh, teaching the pen dance to the uh, primary school student. And this is uh, playing sepak takraw with the uh, primary school student. And then uh, sometimes they also invite us joining their event. This, this one is uh, making rice cake. This is uh, uh, when I'm teaching Malaysia history to the primary school student. And uh, they are also a part-time job uh, to teach uh, Malay language to the high school student uh, because uh, in Nagria city area, they have a homestay program uh, for the high school student to go to the uh, Singapore, Malaysia, and uh, Thailand. So it's very good if they can uh, learn uh, some basic Malay language. So this is our alumni activities. We uh, usually gather uh, every two or uh, every year, depend on situation. And ev every time we gather, we will uh, do some of the, the event. For example, the promotion of Mambu Show and Archipelagic Program at NITAC. Uh, so you can join later if we have this program at uh, uh, UTM or UITM. So this is one of my students, uh, Lin Wei Ming. He's actually from UTM. He finished his bachelor and he received uh, IT fellowship program in 2021. He's currently at uh, Nagoya Institute of Technology enjoying his uh, student life there. So this is uh, his picture during Chinese New Year this year. And this is uh, the picture, the student picture, uh, learning Japanese language with uh, Yamamoto Sensei. Actually, Yamamoto Sensei also teach me during uh, my bachelor degree. So this is some information about the scholarship uh, in Japan. Uh, you can apply through the MAX scholarship. Uh, for MAX scholarship, there are two types of scholarship. Uh, one is uh, through the embassy uh, recommendation. You can directly check uh, through the embassy website, or, or you can also can uh, use the university recommendation. For the university recommendation, actually, you need to uh, check or this, uh, con uh, contact the, the, the uh, potential supervisor uh, actually, you can email or actually you can contact me. I can help you to, to, to search for any potential supervisor. Or you can visit uh, JASO website. Uh, from the JASO website, there's a lot of scholarship. Uh, there are very uh, small scholarship and very some, some scholarship very simple to obtain. Okay. Or if you actually prefer to work in Japan, I, I would like you to re recommend to apply IT fellowship program. For IT fellowship program, it, uh, actually it offers scholarship uh, for the student who want to study at the IT area. Uh, for this uh, uh, program, actually, it will offer two years master program. And after you finish uh, the master course, you need to work uh, in, in IT area for at least five years. It's good if you want to be a very good engineer and uh, involved with the big industry that are uh, located nearby to the IT. IT area. So uh, if you plan to, to build networks with Japanese university and collaborator, actually, uh, I suggest you to, to uh, join the Sakura Science Exchange program. This is very simple, good program, very easy to obtain the, the grant and uh, actually allow you to, to go to the Japan, uh, start to contact with the potential supervisor or potential university that you are planning to apply. And then you also need to attend international conference because normally here, uh, first, you can share your, your knowledge and uh, the potential supervisor. Normally, it can they they can to say identify uh, uh, your your about your field and so on. So from there, actually, you can discuss lah. Okay, and also you can maybe uh, apply our seed next grant, which this one is also very very interesting grant. Okay, this is my experience when I obtained a uh, Sakura Science pro, uh, program in two thousand sixteen January. 
So this is my first international grant. Okay, so that's all my sharing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Zamri, for your inspiring presentation. So um, actually, we are running out of time, but we can have one question uh, for Dr. Zamri. Uh, but after the Q&A session, we are going to have a photo session. So please make sure that you turn on your camera after the Q&A session. Okay, Dr. Zamri, uh, can you share with us? I, I believe uh, there will be um, a candidate who would like to pursue, pursue their study in Japan among the attendees. So what are the tips that you are going to share with them? Okay, normally, uh, for example, if it doesn't have any network with Japanese uh, professor or university, normally you should attend the international conference with very specific topic. Uh, normally, there will be Japanese, uh, how to say, it, uh, professor joining, and from there you can build the the, the network. Uh, or uh, there are also a lot of uh, promotion program. Just now, uh, like I'm sharing uh, in my slide, right? Uh, for example, in UITM or in UTM Johor Bahru, okay, we we promote uh, Mobusho and uh, Aichi fellowship program. So from there also, you can join this kind of program and start to how to say. It, identify the, any potential supervisor. Okay, thank you, Dr. Zamri. I think um, there is also a question in the chat box. Probably you can answer that. So now is the time for our photo session. Okay, so please turn on the camera to all the speakers and also to all the attendees. Do you like to see your beautiful face, your beautiful smile? Okay, so I'm going to come uh, to five, okay? Okay, I think I can start counting now. Five, four, three, two, one. Another one time. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I think it's okay. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Zamri. Now, let us move to the next program, sharing session from MASA members. We will hear valuable stories from MASA members. After two speakers' presentation, we will have another Q&A session. Please freely ask questions using the Q&A feature on the Zoom. The first speaker is Dr. Gan Hong Seng. Let me introduce him. Dr. Gan Hong Seng is Senior Lecturer at Department of Data Science, University Malaysia, Kelantan. He received his PhD from University Technology Malaysia, where he specialized in artificial intelligence, machine learning, medical image processing, and computer vision. Dr. Gan involves in various machine learning projects in medical imaging and healthcare in collaboration with various universities. In 2018 and 2019, he has attended the Sakura Science Exchange Program at Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology in order to develop knee cartilage segmentation by using deep learning model. The model won Gold Award in the International Invention, Innovation and Technology Exhibition in 2020. Dr. Gan, the screen is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Roida, for introducing me. And uh, thank you, the Sakura Science Secretariat, for having me here. Uh, so. Uh, for today's session, so I and uh, later on, uh, 
will present about the uh, some some of the research that is uh, representing the master. So let me share the screen. Okay. So um, on behalf of the MASA, so uh, I would like to introduce about some of the uh, studies that the MASA have done uh, last year in the time of COVID. So uh, basically, COVID has uh, affected all of us. So we are quite interested in knowing how this COVID is actually uh, having an effect on the Japan Exchange Program. So uh, I'm Dr. Gan here. Uh, you can just call me Gan. Uh, I'm I'm one of the member for Masa. So Masa is a relatively new uh, alumni association in Malaysia. Okay. So basic, basically, all the members of MASA, they are quite impressed with the Japanese culture as well as they have attended the Sakura Science program before. So what really attracts us is actually Japan has a quite unique culture. Uh, it is a homogeneous society which is totally different from Malaysia. So we, we have a multi-ethical uh, uh, society which is totally different from Japan. Okay, Japan has its own uh, unique culture, its own language, and also its own uh, social values. And we, the Malaysian researchers, are actually quite uh, amazed by the stunning and diverse greenery with the mountains and breathtaking view in Japan. So uh, the linkage between Malaysia and Japan can actually link back in the 1980s when the Lok East policy actually initiated by the Malaysian government, we sent quite a large number of Malaysian students to study at the Japanese uh, universities and institutes of technologies. So today, there are quite a substantial number of Japan-related graduates and also a lot of uh, visiting researchers in Malaysia. Uh, and like what Dr. Zhangri said, actually the Japan Research Program is uh, very popular among Malaysian uh, researchers. So currently, there are quite a few established uh, alumni association uh, in Malaysia. These include the JAGAM, okay, which is also sending one representative here. Uh, another is the Alumni Look Peace Policy Society. Then we have uh, another called the JAM, which is related to JSPS. Okay, and then for Sakura Science, we have MASA. So, JAM and MASA are two quite recently established alumni associations in Malaysia. And another is the MAIJIKA. So, this one I think some is uh, to some lesser known extent. Okay, so from the number of alumni associations that we can see established in Malaysia, so we can see how successful it is and how popular is the Japanese exchange program. Okay, but uh, the COVID that actually broke out in uh, early uh, 2020 has stopped all this cross uh, border travel. And unfortunately, the Sakura Science program is also need to be postponed until further notice. Okay. So this pandemic has actually stopped the traditional paradigm of uh, culture and research value exchange. So this is something that is worth us to analyze uh, more. Okay. So in this project, actually, we are um, studying the impact of continuous cultural and research learning induced and after the Japanese uh, exchange program. Okay. So based on what we studied, uh, actually we found out that the researchers, they have a very positive research impression toward their incoming uh, research uh, mobility in Japan. So they have also reported positive research experience after they're back from the program. So this positive uh, experience can attribute to a wide number of factors. 
such as a comfortable uh, stay and friendly environment at the host Japanese university, uh, sufficient sub financial support by, provided by the, the Japanese funder, interesting encounters as well as the safe environment. But there are some interaction in terms of the cultural learning and the most apparent is the disruption effect to the social value learning uh, which we can uh, attribute to the reason that uh, physical exposure to the Japanese environment is very important in order for the Malaysian researchers and the students to observe the practice of value. Okay. But other than that, we do not find any significant disruption in the lifestyle as well as the trend. And there are also some interrupt interruption to the research exchange. Okay, so since uh, Sakurai's program is not just about some cultural exchange, but it's also more on towards the research and, and knowledge exchange. So the factors that we are studying will focus more on the knowledge and skill sharing, sustainability of the networking and communication. Okay, so these are the two factors that we found very apparent uh that is uh affected by the interruption by the COVID. but um the the good thing is the scientific productivity uh has reported the lowest disruption among when well, compared to the other two uh, disruption factors so the conclusion is that the japanese uh, universities and higher Education, uh, education institution, they have offered an ambient research environment in order to foster uh, quality researchers. Okay, and since the COVID outbreak, this is the first study on the impact of Japan Exchange Program on Malaysian researchers and students in terms of overseas uh, experience, cultural learning, as well as research exchange. Uh, we found some significant disturbance in terms of continuous learning of Japanese social value, as well as the effective knowledge sharing and sustainability of networking. Okay, so this by now is seems to be irreplaceable by the online platforms. Okay, so this is an overall of. The studies that is conducted by the MASA in uh, last year and we are happy to share this information with the audience here thank you Dr. Gan. okay thank you let us move to the next speaker Dr. Che Azura Hanim Che Abdullah I will introduce Dr. Che Azura Hanim Che Abdullah uh, which is currently the head of nanomaterial synthesis and characterization lab at University Putra Malaysia and an associate professor of nanobiophysics in the Faculty of Science. Her research is concentrated at the interface of nanotechnology and biology. She has served as an ambassador for international conferences a member of the technical program committee, a member of editorial board, and a reviewer for a variety of journals. On a national and international level, she is frequently invited to speak at seminars, workshops, and conferences. She has been recipient of numerous awards, including the Young Educator Award, a visiting fellowship at Universitas Erlanga, and ACP Lectureship and a Global Asian Woman to Win Fellowship. Additionally, she is involved in establishing and mentoring a variety of youth science mobility programs on a local and international level. She currently serves as the leader of the Nanotech Research Group, which was formed to initiate and promote research activities. Dr. Azura Hanim, the screen is yours. Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon. Thank you so much to our moderator, Dr. Waida. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for uh, giving me the opportunity to share with uh, all the participants today regarding the uh, my experience uh, in 
bringing uh, students from Malaysia to Japan. So let me share the screen. Uh, so basically today I will share with you in terms of uh, Sakura Science Program. Okay, I hope you can see the slide. Okay, so basically today I would like to share with all of you uh, regarding a remote Sakura Science Program, Beyond Border Knowledge and uh, Cultural Transfer. So uh, my name is uh, Dr. Chacha, so we, uh, in a short, and currently at uh, University Putra Malaysia. So uh, in terms of uh, Sakura Science, uh, basically I started uh, joining this program since 2016, and in 2017, we start uh, bring our students. And then for this Sakura Science program, uh, we basically uh, work together with uh, QTEC, uh, Kyushu Institute of Technology. And uh, for your information, our Sakura Science program is not only between Malaysia and uh, Japan, but we also have another country, which is Thailand and Taiwan. So uh, today I would like to share with you in terms of uh, the experience of Sakura Science before uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Then I will share with you how we move uh, from physical uh, Sakura science to virtual Sakura science during COVID-19 pandemic. And I will end my presentation by sharing with all of you about the feedbacks and the future pro uh, perspective from our participants. So at first, I will share with you in terms of our experience in uh, having a physical Sakura science program. So of course, for uh, the physical Sakura science program, all the participants uh, will depart uh, from Malaysia to Japan. And in order to make sure that all participants from Malaysia and Thailand uh, together arrive in uh, Japan. So our uh, organizer, uh, Yuki Shirosaki Sensei, uh, basically uh, arranged that uh, all the Malaysian participants will travel to Thailand first. And from Thailand, uh, then we can to, uh, we together with uh, the Thailand participants uh, depart to Japan. And at Japan, uh, basically we will uh, wait for our uh, participants from Taiwan, and then we all together uh, move from uh, Q, uh, Fukuoka Airport to uh, QTEC. So here are some of the program activity that we previously conducted for the physical. Uh, uh, Sakura Science. Usually uh, on the first day, the participants uh, need to introduce uh, themselves and then we uh, usually bring uh, the participants uh, for a tour in a campus and for a QTEC because uh, QTEC have three campus. But for this uh, Sakura program, usually we focus on it, uh, either at Wakamatsu campus or Tobata campus. And apart from having a tour uh, for the campus, we also uh, bring our participants to uh, another uh, place such as uh, Eko Town, uh, Kita Kyushu Historical Museum, uh, Shabondama uh, Soap Company. And apart from that, the students also will have like hands-on uh, activity in the lab. So uh, basically they will uh, working together with uh, postgraduate and undergraduate students at uh, QTEC. And they will be divided into several groups where in each group, uh, consists of Malaysia students, Thailand, Taiwan, and Japan. And uh, we also, uh, at the end of the uh, program, usually we ask our, uh, our students uh, to present their uh, findings and then uh, what they feel about Sakura Science before we have a farewell party. And here are some of the pictures uh, from 2017 to uh, 20. Uh, 2019. So uh, some of the students uh, really uh, enjoy because they can learn directly. For example, uh, some of my students learning about fissure esterification uh, directly from the professor. So they also have the time to hands on. And usually for the physical Sakura science previous, previously, we will dedicate one day uh, by inviting a great researchers uh, from around uh, Japan to share their research. And we also have like focus on uh, women researcher. Uh, and uh, usually for this, uh, usually the students will, uh, will need to ask one question uh, to all the uh, presenter. And apart from, uh, apart from having a uh, tense uh, in lab and then having a talk, we also bring our students uh, to 
enjoy the Japanese culture. Uh, some of the students uh, at the beginning, we we put them at a sensui so inside a QTEC. So they learn how to make a tatami bed. And we also uh, bring them to enjoy uh, yukata, kimono, ikebana, and then uh, learning how to uh, uh, drink uh, Japanese green tea. And uh, for your information, in Kyushu, I, I love the most is my, my I can call it my town because similar to my name, Cha Cha Town. So every time I bring uh, my students to uh, QTEC, I will bring them to Cha Cha Town so that they can enjoy uh, some of the uh, vibrant uh, environment. And then here they can also enjoy the Japanese food and uh, can do uh, also uh, shopping. So, so as uh, COVID-19 strike all of us, so now we move from physical sakura science to online sakura science. So for this uh, online sakura science, we started in 2020, uh, 2021 and 2022, because uh, in 20, basically uh, we planned for uh, sakura science 2020, but at that time, because we didn't see uh, that the pandemic is, uh, uh, the virus is uh, the uh, the the curve is flattened, so we decided to uh, move uh, from physical to online. So uh, in January 2021, we uh, we managed to uh, help our Sakura Science 2020, and this year uh, January and February, basically we just uh, finish our uh, online Sakura Science 2021 uh, in last uh, last uh, two weeks in February 16. So for this, uh, for this uh, online Sakura Science in 2021, basically we use uh, OVIS and Zoom. And 2022, uh, we move uh, from uh, OVIS to Gaya Town. So during the opening and introduction, we will gather using uh, Zoom. And after that, we will uh, use uh, the app called Gaya Town. So uh, by having this, online apps basically we still able to communicate and then interact uh, virtually and for this uh, for the online uh, sakura science we also uh, invite uh, some uh, some of the international researchers to share regarding their uh, current research for example uh, this year we invited uh, professor kitty pong uh, china uh, to present uh, and then share with our participants regarding uh, the latest uh, material called uh, Metal Organic uh, Framework or MOF with our students. So uh, for the online Sakura Science, we also ask our students to uh, work on the project. Basically, we divided them into uh, a group and they, they will mix uh, together and then they will need to work together and they need to come up with a, a PowerPoint presentation and then present uh, just similar to the physical uh, sakura signs, except that we don't have a farewell party just like uh, before. So uh, last year, basically, uh, due to the fact that uh, due to the fact that we just uh, we we are facing the uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, so last year we decided to uh, ask our students uh, to come up with a product and then they need to study in terms of the product can. That uh, related to uh, COVID nineteen, so uh, one of the uh, one of the group uh, come up with a sterilized uh, sheets. Basically, they also uh, need to have look in terms of the technology, uh, how the previous uh, sterilized uh, sheets uh, been uh, being uh, carried out, uh, and then they need to know the history, and then they need to have a look in terms of the evolution, and then what are the current technology that been used. So uh, at the end of the uh, session, like last year, we use OVIS, and then uh, at the end, we will gather, and then we'll ask, uh, we will also invite a few uh, lecturers and researchers uh, from all uh, over uh, Japan to come and evaluate and asking uh, the poster that prepared by our uh, students. OK, uh, so during the physical visit, usually, uh, our students will share or bring uh, the food from Malaysia. So for the virtual uh, Sakura Science, basically, uh, we just make a presentation sharing about Malaysia 
sharing about University Putra Malaysia and uh, of course we also share about uh, our lab, our faculty and institute. And due to the fact that uh, last year we are still in uh, COVID-19 pandemic, so one of the activity is uh, we ask our uh, students to come up with uh, to come out and share with their team from different country how Malaysia uh, combat or measures uh, the COVID-19 infection uh, in terms of the uh, country levels as well as industry level. Okay, now let's move to the last part. So let's hear uh, uh, the feedbacks from the participants and uh, the future perspective. So I think, okay. Uh, Hi, my name I is Raja Hazwan Ibn Tirazi Muhammad Tamrin from University of Putra Malaysia. If not, I can uh, share again. Okay. So this is my online Sakura Science 2021 feedback. As you guys can see, this is the outlines of my feedback. As for my feedback, this program encourages students and young researchers to learn more about the field of biomedical research. I enjoyed and was very excited about this program as I had experienced a very interesting virtual Gaia town that I had never experienced before. During this group project, it makes peace for every group members in conversations and meetings. It is an opportunity to observe and learn from the talents of others. This program also allowed us to make friends with people from different parts of the world where we can become good at establishing connection with people on the international circuit. This is the feedback of the activity. During the group activity, I had a great time in exchanging ideas in a specialized field and build a strong relationship despite the virtual situation. Sakura Science Seminar offered beneficial knowledge for the young researchers. As for the feedback of the Gaia Town, the participants were given a virtual experience of the learning and living environment. Gaya Town is very interesting and amazing as it offers an opportunity for participating students to interact with each other. During this program, I experienced a unique online education program which provides me very interesting platform to learn more about the biomedical field. This program also has resulted in a new style for science education exchange. It offered an opportunity for learning Japanese cultures. I also enjoyed working in a group as I can actually help develop my interpersonal skill and establish stronger communication skills. I hope I can join this program again. I also hope I can attend this program in Japan one day and may this program be acknowledged as the best program by many other universities. My acknowledgement is for Sensei Yuki Shirosaki from Kyushu Institute of Technology for her exemplary supervision and guidance during this program. Also to my esteemed lecturer associated Professor Dr. Chia Azura Hanin Chia Abdullah and to my supportive group mates which is Kwasi Hattori, Natapun Zaiman and Quentin C. Here is my group mate. Thank you for listening. I hope we will meet again one day. Hi. Okay, so this is another uh, feedback from students. Build my network and can provide valuable skills for me that I can use in the future. And the last one, Sakura Science Program is the, this is the second time I, I have joined. It is very meaningful for me and others to join, to join and gain new knowledge and information about Japan, such as culture, uh, people, technology and also science. It is a good uh, for Japan and other Asian countries like Malaysia to share the knowledge and information for the bright future in the Asian. All right. Please do not keep. Uh, please do keep uh, going this program in the future. Hopefully, someday I can come to Japan and I can visit Japan. All right. Thank you, everyone. That is for. Uh, that's all from me. I build my. And here are another feedbacks from another participants, and I uh, from their feedbacks they really enjoy. Although we uh, come up with uh, with online Sakura Science program. And uh, previously, during the physical uh, Sakura Science, at the end of the event, usually we, uh, like uh, the, the researchers, uh, the main researchers from Malaysia, Thailand, Taiwan, uh, will uh, give a feedback to our uh, collaborator in Japan in terms of what are the improvements that we would like to 
do in the following uh, sacra signs. And uh, in the previous uh, physical event also, usually the students uh, will present uh, their feedback uh, before they, uh, they, uh, they are given the certificate. But for the uh, virtual sakura science, uh, usually we just uh, have like a session uh, using Zoom at the end of the session. So what I can say by moving from physical to virtual sakura, basically I can see the advantages in terms of a uh, two, which is access and equity. That means uh, by having a sakura science, it is a uh, uh, it only uh, it can uh, increase the widened access because some of the students sometimes they have the disability. So by having virtual, the disability students can also join the sakura science, and the virtual uh, will uh, reduce the cost and in, uh, and of course will support the sustainability. And uh, for the future perspective. What I can say that in a post-pandemic world, the higher education must be creative and innovative uh, by allowing both a physical and virtual students exchange. The intercultural exchanges via technology are intended to benefit students. And these new teaching methods will allow for both visual and face-to-face -face mobility. And the virtual student mobility is suggested as a new, uh, a new form of post-pandemic higher education internalization where still uh, the students can uh, engage with their international friends. And suggestion for those who implement virtual, uh, virtual uh, students' mobility, that means uh, we need to have like a support uh, from faculty, international relations staff, uh, decision makers, and funders. And uh, we also uh, hope for the future that there is a virtual exchange project that uh, will uh, help in enhan enhance the students' digital and cultural uh, competence. So uh, before I end my presentation, I would like to uh, to share with all of you who haven't uh, been to Japan, please go and visit Japan as Japan is the most intoxicating place for me. The Japanese culture, almost everything, the manners, the food and everything fascinates me. And uh, what I can say in terms of uh, my experience in Japan, happiness is going on a sushi date in Japan. and. Maybe you can explore uh, Japan together with your friends. So with that, uh, I would like to thank uh, again the organizer for giving me the opportunity to share my experience. With that, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Chacha, for a very interesting sharing on the virtual Sakura science. Okay, now we are going to move to the Q&A session. Dr. Gan, uh, could you please be on screen together with Dr. Chacha? So we have one question from the attendee. I think both Dr. Gan and Dr. Chacha can answer this. Okay, do Sakura signs open to any field or some specific field? An independent researcher who does not work with uh, registered or any universities can join the Sakura signs. Okay, uh, so maybe I can answer. So basically for the Sakura Science uh, program, uh, it's open, it's not limited to, uh, for example, my field is biomedical, so it's not limited to uh, our specific field. So basically for the Sakura Science program, uh, you need to have your uh, partner in Japan, that means your collaborator in Japan, and then you can uh, work together in applying for the Sakura Science. Uh, usually for us, we are uh, helping each other Usually, I will help in terms of writing up in English uh, for our uh, Japan uh, partner before they can apply for uh, from the GST. Uh, at, at, uh, Dr. Ruaida, the second question. I think the first one is uh, the regarding uh, the field. I think the second one is uh, independent um, researcher, right? Yes. But independent Indi researcher. Independent uh, researcher. Okay, so in, if you are independent researcher, but uh, you still uh, can, uh, as uh, Dr. Zamri have uh, mentioned before, you need to make a co uh, connection with a Japanese researcher. So you can attend a uh, international uh, conference. You can also attend. Uh, usually, we also conduct a joint symposium between uh, Malaysia and Japan. So I think uh, maybe if you want more information, maybe you can uh, leave your email. So then if I have another uh, program, then you can join and try to get uh, 
the partner or collaborator from Japan. Maybe Dr. Gan can uh, help me in uh, give more uh, information regarding the questions. Oh yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Cha Cha. So your explanation is actually uh, very uh, comprehensive. I think it actually answers the question. Uh, do you have? Okay. Uh, I think there is one question from Firdaus. Uh, is it open for international students? Uh, yes, because like uh, in our uh, experience, uh, we also have like international students that are uh, studying in Thailand and studying in uh, Taiwan. So they also join uh, the, the our Sakura Science program. So it is uh, okay. Okay, Dr. Okay, Waida. Thank you, Dr. Chacha. I have one personal question. What? Okay. Hello? Okay. Hello? Yes. Uh, uh, this is my personal question regarding, regarding the uh, virtual Sakura signs. Uh, is there any difference in terms of the motivation? Uh, comparing between the physical and online session, motivation okay. or interaction? Okay, uh, basically, uh, yes, but I think uh, by moving from physical to virtual, because some of our students or some of the participants are, you know, like they are a bit shy. So when we move from physical to virtual, basically they can work uh, much better. Yeah, because uh, some uh, sometimes uh, during the discussion with the group, they they not uh, turn on the 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 camera, camera. but they are still uh, yeah, but they uh, they are still communicate like uh, using office. They still can use the uh, the voice similar to Gaya Town. They can uh, interact, and uh, I think the motivation basically. I think my students uh, really enjoy the the new type of apps that we can use in order to. Because you will feel like you are in Japan because there is also a kind of like sharing session by Japanese students regarding the culture. So I think they, they, they are also motivated, similar to the physical, except that they are not able to, you know, uh, you know like experience the, the sushi in Japan. They, they're not uh, able to visit uh, the, the places like uh, previously you, we bring our students to, uh, you know, like the Major the physical places. sites in yes, Japan. The, yeah. Yes, the physical sightseeing. So they just uh, have a look uh, from the, you know, like from the video. And then in terms of the lab as well, they uh, we managed to make a visual uh, lab tour. But in terms of the experience for hands-on, you know, like see a lot of like uh, high-end equipment in university, uh, that one is, uh, we, we basically lacking on that for the online uh, Sakura Science. Okay, uh, I think that's all, uh, Dr. Waida. Thank you, Dr. Chacha and also Dr. Gai. I think we're running out of time already. Thank you very much uh, to both of you. Okay, okay next, you. we will uh, have our final session where we will have sharing session on study and work opportunity in Japan by JASO and JAGAM. Let me introduce our next speaker, Mr. Raymond Tan from JASO. Mr. Raymond Tan, could you be on screen? Um, okay, so the screen is yours. Thank you, um, Dr. No Ruaida for the uh, introduction and thank you for JST and Masa to uh, invite Jasso Malaysia office to have the presentation about study in Japan uh, in this afternoon. So uh, let me share my screen and then uh, we are going for our presentation. Okay, so today we are going to talk about basic information on study in Japan. And uh, because of our uh, lack of time, 
Um, so that uh, means uh, the uh, limitation on the time. So uh, during my presentation, I, would, I have tried my very best to shorten all the information and also to let you have more information or more effective information. I have uh, put quite a number of QR codes on the uh, screen. And so you just uh, feel free to screenshot it. So first of all, please screenshot this. This is about uh, Jasso Malaysia office. If you have any uh, inquiry in the future regarding study in Japan, you are always uh, welcome to contact us. Okay, so next slide about Jasso. So what is Jasso all about? Because I am from Jasso Malaysia office, which is one of the in, uh, overseas office under Jasso Japan. So, JASO stands for Japan Students of, uh, Organization, and uh, we support the students of higher educational institution under the uh, jurisdictions of the Ministry of Education, Cultures, Sports, Science, and Technology of Japan. And uh, overseas office is actually under these support programs for international students. And uh, our job scope basically like today, we provide information about study in Japan. And in terms of uh, simplified the enrollment, especially for undergraduate students, we uh, conduct examination for Japanese university admission for international students, in short, we call it EJU, and also provides uh, scholarships to international students. Okay, now, the next item we are going to talk about study in Japan and why, uh, why study in Japan should be one of our uh, options, especially for Malaysian students. Okay, so uh, we have picked up five uh, items uh, or five reasons that uh, why study in Japan should be a good uh, destination or in Japan should be a good or will be a good destination for Malaysian students. Number one, World class science and technology. Number two, international environment, because even though it's, it's a Japanese environment, but you have a lot of international students from all over the world and you can exchange your ideas and also your, um, your research. Okay. And number three, rich nature and culture. Number four, employment in Japan. And number five, affordable academic fees. Yes, how affordable would, can it be? So this is a comparison chart between the US university with a Japanese university. Well, as you look from, as you can tell from the chart, um, national or local private undergraduate program in, U, in the US, it will cost you about 26,300 USD. But if you come to Japan, uh, it will cost you about 5,000 USD. And so for private university, it costs you about the same, about three to four times more if you do it in US university. Okay, so now next, we are going to talk about the Japanese higher education. Okay, Japanese higher education for under, uh, after high school or secondary school from Malaysia, uh, under Malaysia education system. So we will proceed to a undergraduate program or an associate degree program or a diploma or a advanced diploma program. So actually we have four programs that we can go after we have graduated from a high school from Malaysia. And so the, uh, the minimum requirement or the basic requirement will be uh, completing the 12 years of formal education. Okay, so now we are going to look into details. Okay, for, uh, in order for Malaysian students to further studies to Japan, actually we have three ways. Way number one will be those courses that conducted in English medium. Uh, in another word, we will call it uh, uh, English track program. Okay, so for English track program, it's only offered under university program, which is a undergraduate program or a master or PhD program. Yes, they are, uh, courses are conducted in English. And under this way, number one, so what will be the requirement? Okay, you have to complete 12 years formal education. For Malaysian system, it will be STPM or UEC, or for the uh, Cambridge system, it will be A-levels and uh, equivalents, the diploma or IB. And 
with a good proficiency in English, either in TOEFL or IELTS, then you may reply, oh sorry, you may apply directly to the English cross program or English track program. Okay, then another two ways. Way two and way three are all those Japanese language program, which is Japanese track program. And this program offered in all higher education institutions, uh, including uh, university program, junior colleges, college of technology and professional training colleges. And these are all program under or provided in Japanese. Okay, so way number two, same thing, you have completed your 12 year formal education under UEC or STPM or A-level or IB or a diploma. And you have a good proficiency in Japanese language and you may sit EJU examination directly and with your EJU examination result, you apply directly to the university or the higher education institutions in Japan. Well, way number three, which is you don't have the proficiency in the language. So for those that you have already completed 12 year formal education, you just go to any Japanese language program, which um, I'm sorry, you just go to any Japanese language institution with carry a um, further study program. And so you just study in that uh, program, either one year or one and a half year or two years, then you sit for EJU examination, you, you, then you proceed to the higher education institutions. But for those that only have 11 years, which is IG, O level, or SPM, you are not enough of travel formal education. And you have to go for a preparatory program, which conducted by 24 Japanese language schools, one in Malaysia, 23 in Japan. And after completed the uh, after completing the uh, professional uh, the preparatory program then you sit for EJU examination, then you proceed to Japan, okay? So these are the general uh, pathway for Malaysian students after our high school. Now, next one will be the uh, admission into a postgraduate with a master program. You have to complete 16 years of schooling or you have completed your undergraduate program. And for doctoral program, you have to complete your uh, master uh, degree uh, or if you are a master degree holder, okay? So, and for postgraduate uh, studies, it will be slightly different concept well, to a uh, Malaysian uh, concept. Okay, so first of all, you search the university and find a thesis advisor. This is very important. Finding a thesis advisor is very important for you to proceed to a master program or a PhD program in Japanese university. Then after you have found such a school, find a thesis advisor, you have to contact the thesis advisor and to obtain an informal consent from that thesis advisor. Then you do your applications. So the application guideline you can download from the website, the official website of the university. Then you do your enrollment uh, examination and the preparation you can always consult with the thesis advisor and you do your enrollment. Uh, enrollment. And also for those Japanese track program, then uh, how, how you are going to do with the language. Regarding the language level, you have to consult with the thesis advisor as well, because depends on the thesis advisor, uh, some thesis advisor may allow you to do the, your thesis in English, even though it's a Japanese track program. So this will depends on the thesis advisor. So you have to consult with the thesis advisor. Okay, so. Now for school search, so uh, you just uh, screenshot number one and number two. And if you, are, uh, in, if you are intending to take a program in English medium, then you just take uh, number three, you just uh, screen, uh, scan number three QR code. Okay, so uh, a little bit time for you, about three seconds maybe, one, two, three. Okay, so now let's go to the uh, Japanese language school. For SPM and IG or O level students, please scan only number two because this is a university pre uh, preparatory program. Whereas for those that you have already completed 12 years from education, you can either one or you can uh, scan both of them. Okay. But for SPM or O level or IG students, this Japanese language school that you are allowed to go is only under number two. Okay. So uh, please uh, be careful. 
about that. Otherwise, you are not entitled to any university enrollment. Okay, so uh, another three seconds. One, two, three. Okay, now let's talk about the examination used in the uh, study in Japan. So the very important examination will be EJU for Japanese track program. So EJU for uh, for um, for details, please uh, scan this QR code. So today I'm going to run a very brief idea of EJU. So if you are planning to do the Japanese track program for science related subjects, then you will take number one, Japanese as a foreign language, number two, science. You have to choose two science subjects out of three based on the university requirement. And number four, mathematics, uh, usually for science related students, you have to take further max, course two further max, okay? Whereas for liberal students, you have to choose number one, Japanese as foreign language, number three, Japan and the world, and number four, mathematics, course one, which is mathematics modern. Okay, so this is a general information for you about EJU. And for details, please screenshot this, I mean, so please scan this QR code. Okay, another three seconds for you. One, two, and three. Okay, so now let's go to the next slide. Okay, uh, about the proficiency. Yes, if you are planning to do in a uh, Japanese track program, then these are the scores or these are the level that uh, you need to have the minimum requirement that you have to obtain for the proficiency. Okay, so for graduate schools, for EJU, um, 400 points for your selective uh, paper, you have to obtain at least 250. For undergraduates, about 200 to 250, uh, over 400. And for profession training colleges, about 200 over 400. Okay, so now the next one will be English uh, track program. For English proficiency requirement, uh, TOEFL 71 to 80 for IAPS about 5.5 to 6. Okay, this is for undergraduates program. And for postgraduates program, please refer uh, to your um, thesis advisor for further information. Okay, so academic fees and living expenses. Okay, please screenshot this. I mean, so please scan this QR code. Cost of living costs you about 4,000 to 4,200 Malaysia ringgit per month in Tokyo, which is the highest expenditure uh, city. Okay, so uh, the other city like Osaka, Kyoto, will cost you about 3,008, 3,005 to 3,008 per month. Okay, so um, this is the uh, cost of living. Okay, Tokyo will be the highest, 4,000 to 4,200 per month. And academic fees for Japanese language schools, it will cost you about 23K, 23,000 to 78,000 based on the time length that you need to take, whether it's a one year or one and a half year or two years program. And also for university program for national and local public, it cost you about 20K per year, regardless what course that you are taking. Whereas for private university will cost you about 35K to 45K, okay? Depends on the subjects that you're taking. Okay, for details, please screenshot, or sorry, please screen this, scan this QR code. Thank you. Okay, now talk about scholarship. Yeah, scholarship, we have two division. The first division, number one, are those scholarships that we apply before the arrival in Japan, Number one, you have the Japanese government, Monbu Kagakusho Max Scholarship. This one, please refer to the Embassy of Japan in Malaysia because it's given under the, uh, the, uh, 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 the recommendation from the embassy. Okay, and number two, reservation program. And this one, please refer to the uh, EJU uh, QR code and so you will have the details for this. Okay, and for number three and number four, usually it's not applicable for those uh, undergraduate students uh, these are mainly for those students, number, especially number three, uh, exchange support program is actually for those students that they are actually currently a Malaysian university student, which they are going to have an exchange program with a Japanese university. Okay, so uh, scholarship after the arrival in Japan, number one, you have to counter check with the school because uh, majority of the scholarship were under this uh, division or under this uh, category. So you have to go to the school, check with the school directly and 
when and how you are going to apply for a particular scholarship. Okay, so always go to the school and check with them. And number two on campus scholarship uh, or tuition fee exemptions, yes, most of the Japanese university provides 30, 50, even 100% school fee discount. Okay, so this one you have to check with the school as well. Okay, so for uh, further uh, details, please uh, scan this QR code. Okay, this is for the uh, scholarship information. Okay, now talk about the employment in Japan after your completion, after your graduations from Japanese university or a higher education from Japan. So uh, the numbers of changing a status from students to a working permit is increasing as what you can see from uh, the chat on your, uh, on your left. Okay, so uh, for details as well, please scan this QR code and you will have a very details on the employment about Japan after the graduations. And today, uh, because of time issue, I don't, uh, I, I don't think I will touch too much on this. Okay, so please refer by yourself by uh, scanning this QR code. Okay, so in the future, if you want to have more information or if you need more about all, um, I'm sorry, if you need more information about study in Japan, so please scan this QR code and you will have uh, how to search a school application deadline, uh, degree program in English, and so on. Okay, you will have these items in details. So please scan this QR code. Okay, lastly, so this is our contact uh, method. If you have any doubts about study in Japan, always call us or email us or to arrange for a Zoom meeting uh, in the future. And also you can scan this QR code to have to, uh, to log into our web, uh, website. Okay, so. Thank you for thank you very much for your time and uh, thank you for your, um, uh, your thank you for your time and for your participation. Arigato gozaimashita. Thank you, Mr. Raymond. Thank you, Mr. Raymond. Uh, let me introduce our next speaker, Dr. Lawiya from Jagam. Dr. Lawiya, uh, can you be on the screen? Okay. So, Dr. Law, the screen is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ruida, for uh, introducing. Uh, can you see my screen? Let me, yeah, can you see my screen now? A quick check. Hello? Yes. Can you not, not share? Uh, let me share. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, just a minute. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay. Okay, let me. Oh. Okay, uh, good afternoon uh, to all. Uh, thank you, uh, the moderator. Uh, and also, thank you to uh, Masa and GST for inviting Jagam uh, to this webinar. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Dr. Lau from uh, Jagam, representing uh, Japan Graduate Association of Malaysia. So, Jagam was established in 1973, and currently we have a member of 2000. And uh, uh, this is our uh, president, uh, Mr. Gary Tang, and also our honorary patron, uh, Mr. Ko Peng Ui, and also uh, Mr. Lim Peng Jin. Okay, uh, so these are the main uh, objective of Jagam, uh, is to first of all is to advise uh, prospective students who like to study in Japan. And number two is to also advise students that uh, upon their uh, return to Malaysia, uh, respect to opportunities uh, of employment and also condition employment. And of course, number three is on uh, social and cultural activities. And most important, number four, is to promote goodwill and better understanding between Malaysia and Japan, uh, as mentioned uh, by our speakers earlier uh, on the Kakehashi uh, role. And uh, to mention that uh, in 2018, uh, Japan, uh, uh, Jagam Central and Southern branches uh, has been awarded was awarded uh, the, the foreign minister's commendation. And you can see this is the, uh, the, the photo. Okay. And, uh, and last year, uh, we also, uh, the Jagam also received ambassador uh, award from Ambassador Oka. Okay, uh, the main thrust of our uh, activities is uh, education, as you can see uh, from our activities. So we work with uh, JASO and also Embassy of Japan. And also we have uh, some scholarship collaboration with a number of universities. 
Okay, and uh, uh, we assisted uh, JASO in organizing the EJU examination. Uh, and also the Japan uh, Education Fair in 2019, which, we, which is held uh, physically. Okay, we have the 26 exhibitors participated in the Education Fair. And of course, in 2000, uh, 2021, because of the COVID-19, uh, our Education Fair has become virtual, huh? as you can see from the, uh, from the photo here. Okay, so Jagam Japan Virtual Education Fair 2021, and uh, this year we we uh, we will continue uh, with the education fair as well. Okay, these are the list of the exhibitors, and uh, we actually organized the press conference orientation and dinner on 18th of March 2021 for the Max scholars uh, with. Uh, who's currently in Japan for the undergraduate program. Okay, and in another occasion, uh, October 2021, we also organized another uh, orientation for the postgraduate program, as you can see from the photo shot. Huh? Okay, uh, we actually have a few session online seminar on promoting uh, uh, studies, further study in Japan. Uh, of course, the most important is the information on scholarship. Huh? Because a lot of students actually, they, in the high school, uh, they, a lot of them do not know about the scholarship. Huh? Okay, you can see, uh, so uh, from uh, 12 to 25th of May 2021, actually we have organized a few rounds huh, of this uh, further study in Japan. Huh? Okay, so you can see that, uh, I think there must be an effort, a continued effort uh, to promote a study in Japan. And this is a scholarship talk given to university students uh, in Utah. Okay, uh, be, be, beside this, we also have a number of scholarships, uh, Jagam Akamongkai uh, Language School. Okay, and also uh, most recently with the uh, Nippon Designer School, Malaysia College. Okay, these are the press conference we have with uh, one of the newspaper. Uh, you can visit our website, uh, jagam.org.my. Uh, we also have uh, these uh, eConnect apps. Yeah, you can actually download the eConnect apps uh, to, to get more information and also the latest information of our activities. Okay. Uh, these are the some of the photos. Uh, some members actually volunteered uh, 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 to give, uh, I mean, to have these language, uh, Japanese language classes in some of the high school uh, in Klang Valley. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, so these are some of the activities we have done. Uh, despite COVID-19, uh, we will we, we continue our effort uh, to promote cultural activities at high schools in Klang Valley. Okay, these are the drawing lessons. You can see uh, drawing lessons, okay. Uh, yep. Okay, these are the most recent activities, uh, collaboration with Nippon Designer School. Okay. Okay, Jagam aims to be the kakeyashi between Malaysia and Japan. Eh? And uh, we have activities and network with our ASEAN counterpart uh, through official ASKOJA and ASCHA function. So we have uh, one, number one is ASKOJA, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, initiative of the late Prime Minister Takeo Fukuda. It was established in June 1977 for, for the purpose of continuing to have exchange of information experiences among the member countries. And number two is the ASJA, Asia Japan Alumni, which was established in April 2000. Okay, so for this ASJA, ASKOJA, we have uh, activities, uh, for example, uh, before COVID, we have this in Cambodia and also Laos. Uh, okay, and uh, most recently, we have our own uh, organized by Malaysian uh, Jagam, uh, the 19 Ascoja, uh, Ascha Ascoja Jagam Symposium. Uh, this is in January 22nd. Okay, these are among the speakers we have. Uh, Mr. Go, uh, our patron, honorary patron, uh, okay, on the keynote. 
And also we promote a cultural exchange meeting, Koryukai, uh, between Japanese high school and uh, Malaysian high school, uh, as you can see from the photo. Okay, uh, yeah, a lot of activities is, uh, we have up in, in between. Okay, uh, the next trust, of course, is on culture. So you can see that uh, we have uh, participated uh, in Bon Odori uh, Johor in 2019, uh, Aki Matsuri in Penang 2019, and of course, uh, uh, Jagam Japan Airlines Origami session. Uh, I think the recent one we have it uh, in online. And of course, uh, during the COVID-19, uh, we also have initiated the CSR activities uh, with the mass donation together with His Excellency Dato uh, Kenny Jawan, Ambassador of Malaysia to Japan, supported by the JJB, uh, the J uh, Jagam Japan branch in 2020. Uh, as you can see that, uh, this is diagram. Okay. And also, uh, this is the mass donation uh, with our with the ambassador, uh, His Excellency Hiroshi Oka, in 2020. Yeah. Okay, we also have uh, these CSR activities uh, where we donated the laptop uh, to one of the school, uh, SJKC Salah South and SJKC Connor, yeah, because uh, because of the COVID nineteen. Uh, they have a uh, problem in the e-learning. There's lack of uh, laptop uh, uh, for the school children. Uh. And of course, the most recent one is the donation of 800 uh, notebook uh, to the Ministry of Health front Frontliners by Jagam, uh, Mr. Eric Gore, the founder of the Notism, uh, which is the, the, the uh, uh, who uh, produced the books, uh, the not, uh, notebook. And uh, on the receiving end is... Uh, Dato Sri Muhammad Shafiq Abdullah, uh, who is currently the Secretary General of the Civil Service. Okay, we also have business talk, as you can see from our uh, activities. And of course, uh, the sport activities uh, like the Rewa Cup. Okay, uh, I think we have a lot of uh, golf talent in Jagam, as you can see from here. Okay, uh, so these are some of the activities we have uh, the last year and last uh, the sport activities. And we have this Saturday uh, sport activities. Uh. Okay, thank you uh, for listening. Uh, so these are the uh, quick walkthrough of the JAM activities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lau, for your sharing. Uh, maybe, maybe I should uh, stop sharing then. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lau. Okay, uh, so now we are actually running out of time, but probably we can have one question. Um, let me check first. Okay. The question, uh, I think this is for Jasso. I am enjoyed in the introduction regarding basic information for study in Japan. I have a question for the speaker who presented by JASO, Mr. Raymond. Is there any sandwich PhD program in Japan with Taiwan's university? How to apply and what's the requirement? Thank you. Okay, for PhD program, I have mentioned just now, you have to look out for a university and then so you have to consult uh, you have to look out for the university and then you have to consult with the, uh, the professor uh, in person and then you have to get the soft consent from the particular professor, which we, uh, I mentioned just now in our slide is a uh, thesis advisor. So you have to uh, approach to a university. So by what means, number one, you may uh, get your introduction from your current university lecturer or the second one, you will go and uh, look out for those researcher uh, data that uh, which professor from partic a particular university from Japan does the same uh, research uh, with you. So you will just get um, a contact first, then you have to contact the thesis advisor. Uh, I mean the professor 
to be your thesis advisor before you do the applications. Um, I, am I uh, answering the question? Yes, Mr. Raymond. Thank you, Mr. Raymond, for the feedback. Yeah, welcome. Okay, uh, since we don't have much time, uh, I'm going to move to the next and also to the end of the webinar. Uh, let me introduce Mr. Kuroki Shinichi, Director, Planning and Management Department of Sakura Science Program Headquarters to deliver the closing rem remarks. Mr. Kuroki? Yeah. Okay, yeah, well. Thank you, Dr. Jamian, for moderating today's webinar. And hello to all the participants. I am Shinichi Kuroki of GST, the Japan Science and Technology Agency. Uh, congratulations on the successful ending to today's webinar. I would like to give my sincere thanks to all of you for your participation and mutually beneficial exchange of information. Today, we have got a very, very new, many, many information. And also we have got many uh, questions and answers. Uh, I myself very much satisfied with the result of today's webinar. I should firstly should say, I would like to thank His Excellency Mr. Katuhiko Takahashi, Ambassador of Japan to Malaysia, and Mr. Noru Azam, Chaoje Dafiers of the Embassy of Malaysia in Tokyo, and especially Mr. Keiji Furuya, President of Japan Malaysia Parliamentary Friendship Association was the greetings to encourage Sakura Science Club members. We would also like to express our sincere grat gratitude to Professor Dr. Moi Mem Ling and the senior lecturer Dr. Zamri Yusuf for sharing the valuable experiences and research in Japan. How was today's webinar bridging social capital and cultivating excellence? I understand that this theme was adopted to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the Rukuist policy with the aim of further strengthening relations by bridging Malaysia and Japan for further development in the future. The Malaysian alumni meeting is taking place for the first time in about two and a half years in this memorable year. So we hope you enjoyed it. We also hope that the information you obtained today will help you to study or find a job abroad, especially in Japan, and also allow you to pursue your dreams. The Sakura Menta Karan on Sakura Science Club homepage also introduces experiences of studying and finding jobs in Japan by Sakura mentors. This column provides you useful information for both studying and job finding in Japan. If you have any questions, just ask our Sakura mentors on the Sakura Science Club website. JST and Sakura mentors are happy to help you anytime with Sakura Science Club in Japan. Japan always wants the best and brightest like you. Finally, I look forward to seeing you at the next Sakura Science Club event. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Kuroki. May I request to all the speaker to turn on the camera so that all the participants can see before we end this session. Finally, may I express my appreciation to kind cooperation of JST, MASA, all speakers, and of course, our participants. Before we end our session today, just to inform you that our next Sakura Science Alumni Meeting will be organized by Sakura Science Club Nepal for the first time. I would also like to remind you about the questionnaire 
that will be launched immediately after this webinar ends. And we would like to ask you to fill it uh, if the time allows. You will receive a certificate of participation after completing it. With that, uh, thank you everyone and have a nice weekend. I got to go, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.